joy to see everyone here today. Uh, sometimes the Christmas Eve services have a sort of feeling of in a stable, lowly, right? Uh, Christmas morning sometimes has the feel of the divine act, the, the, the great light, as, as we'll see in John 1, the, the light and life for all men, the divine uh, gift of salvation. So that will be a, a great uh, focus for our service today. Everything is printed in your bulletin. Uh, if all goes well, everything is printed there. Um, it's all hymns and, and liturgy, and uh, so we begin with our first hymn is Joy to the World. Please rise. <laughs> Oh 
name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, your miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray to you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, the bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in this stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing a great and mighty wonder. Testament reading is from Isaiah chapter 52. 
How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who publishes peace, who brings good news of happiness, who publishes salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. The voice of your watchmen, they lift up their voice. Together they sing for joy, for eye to eye they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, you waste places of Jerusalem. The Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. To us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. The epistle is from Titus chapter 3. When the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy by the washing of regeneration and renewal, and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that being justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. to St. John, the first chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light, that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to his own and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. We sing Angels from the Realms of Glory. <laughs> Thank you. 
act a certain way to take on certain responsibilities that are given to me maybe by scripture maybe by society and these are good values sometimes the expectations have no explanation at all right and yet we expect these things of each other or even just of ourselves and sometimes uh, along with keeping up appearances and along with wanting to meet expectations that are sometimes barely defined we have our own sense of saying i need to know that i'm not a failure right and this especially comes during this this month this christmas to say i need to know that i didn't flunk christmas this year <laughs> did i do the right things have i crop uh, checked the right boxes what grade would i give myself for christmas did i buy the right gifts did i remember to buy any gifts <laughs> feel these perceptions inside ourselves. We feel these burdens. We feel these perceptions and expectations throughout life from people. And like I said, maybe some of these are good and proper expectations or values that are put upon us to hold for the good of us, of, of family and of society. But holding up these expectations and these burdens and holding up this idea that I'm not the failure, it's a lot of work. It is a lot of work. And getting through these kind of days, whether it's a season or getting through the kind of days of life, because these expectations now find things in ourselves like our own limitations. I can't do it. Or I think I should be able to, but I'm not accomplishing the things that I think I should accomplish. Or maybe I'm able to do less and less as time goes on. We have a hard time in life. John 1 talks about life and light. Sometimes we say it's hard and it's dark. There's so much darkness around us. But the good news, and the good news of this Christmas morning is that God doesn't do life and light the way we do. God doesn't do this in such a way that he is standing over us with a stern taskmaster face saying, better, again, better. <laughs> he has come to us in John chapter 1 saying, in him was light and life. And he came to us to bring this light and life to us. The way we go through Christmas is the way we go through life. But this is not the way that God has done it at all. God's first priority, we see, is that he wants to be near to us, not far away. You know, there's this wonderful song from the 80s. It's wonderful musically, but it's terrible theologically, right? God is watching us from a distance. That's not John 1 at all. John 1 says, God became flesh, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. He walked the same roads, got the same dirt on his face, on his feet, got the same troubles in his life. The thing is, he did it perfectly. <laughs> we break life. We have a hard time at light and life. So God came to us in us and with us and for us with light and life for all people. God came to us not just to watch over us and stand back at a distance but to come near and say I'm here. I'm here to help. Watch what I can do for you. And God's priority was not to simply receive, give me this, give me that, like many ideas of this God or of some other false God in mythology or idolatry to say God needs something from you. <coughs> it's a false idea of this God and it's a false God of any other kind. God did not come to say, give me. God came to say, I give to you. God has come to us to give us light and life. Life over the life that we try to make for ourselves. Life to renew us, a new life, to make us new creations in Jesus. God has come to bring us light into our darkness and 
What a dark world we can sometimes have. But Jesus has come to shine into that light. He comes to bring forgiveness. Verses 10 and 11 of John 12 would say, He came into the world, but the world didn't know him. He came to his own people, but they did not receive him. Now, maybe we think, oh, his own people, he came to Israel, and Israel didn't receive him. But that's not what John is talking about, right? His own people are the people in the world. He's come to us, and we have not received him until he gives us light and life, until the Spirit comes to us and gives us faith. But he came into the world, and the world did not know him and did not receive him. But we have in verse 12, but to all who do know him, who believe in his name, Jesus Christ, he has given us the right to become children of God. Another Christmas gift for you. Along with light and life, grace and truth, forgiveness and salvation is this, that he has given you the right to know that you are a child of God through faith in Jesus Christ. Through that, Jesus Christ. As Christ was born in a, in a wonderful way, it also says in verse 13 that we are born anew of God. We look at that life and say that we have been given that life again. Uh, I heard someone say one time about one of his co-workers. Uh, that co-worker, insert whatever name you want. Uh, it, that co-worker, he's a taker, not a giver. And it was a very disappointing statement to say about someone to say that this person is mostly concerned about taking and taking and taking and not being giving and, and being really focused in on himself. But that, while that may be humanity's position, and while we may know that at times we're the ones going, oh, what can I take? What can I work? What can I accomplish? What can I succeed? What can I do? What can I get for myself? And maybe even that's the way we look at giving, I'm giving so that I have done something. God is a different way altogether. He has come not to take, not to demand, but he has come to give you in Christ. It's not something you can get for yourselves, but he gives it. What he says is, receive it. To all who receive him, this gift of being able to just simply receive from God and say, thank you, Lord, for this great gift. He's the giver. And we are not to be the ones grabbing and taking, but we, he's the giver, and he just says, receive my gift. And we say, thank you, Lord, for the great gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now may the peace of the Lord, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We continue on page 7 as we confess our faith in the Nicene, through the words of the Nicene Creed. Please stand. We confess. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. And in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. And was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and he sits at the right hand of the power, and he will come again with the glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. Who with the Father and the Son together.
together to worship and glorify who is so by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We continue with the prayer for church. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that your Son, the eternal Word, has become flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. Extend his praise into all the world, that with us many would come to hope in his steadfast love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Send forth men to publish your peace and bring us your good news of happiness. Keep them faithful to declare your gracious reign in Christ. Bless the work of missionaries at home and abroad, that all the ends of the earth may see your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As our families gather in this holy season, give us patience, that we may be slow to judge and quick to forgive. Comfort the lonely with your presence, and help us extend the welcome of our homes and the friendship of your grace. Make us mindful of those less fortunate who celebrate this blessed day in poverty and want. Watch this day. Keep them in safety as they serve us and uphold their families while they are apart. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, guard and keep all who are sick, lonely, overwhelmed by grief, grief or poor in spirit. Especially we pray this day for Louis, Ruth, Ruth Phyllis, Marjorie, and Carl. For Walt, Bob, Joanne, Susan, Gerald, and Ruth. For David, Robin, Ken, Caitlin, Robert, Bryant, and Elmer. For Christine, Brad, Jim, and Noah. For Mike, Loretta, Peggy, Lois, and Christine. For Judy, Lisa, and Dave, Isabel, Roma, and Ron. That they may be comforted and healed according to your good grace and good and gracious will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, Lord God, for all your people who have gone before us and now rest in your presence. Keep us faithful with them until that day when you make all things new. For you live and reign with Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated now as we receive the offering. We continue on page eight. Please rise. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. 
It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation. For you have had mercy on us in giving your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Grant us your spirit, gracious Father, that we may heed the, give heed to the testament of your Son in true faith, and above all, firmly take to heart the words with which Christ gives, us, gives to us his body and blood for our forgiveness. By your grace, lead us to remember and give thanks for the boundless love which he manifested to us when by pouring out his precious blood, he saved us from your righteous wrath and from sin, death, and hell. Grant that we may receive the bread and wine that is his body and blood as a gift, guarantee, and pledge of his salvation. One God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, at his command and with his own words, we receive his testament. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
canticle we sing uh, of the Father's love begotten on page 12. Please rise. Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Receive now the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. You may be seated. We sing, Go Tell It on the Mountain. <coughs>
again, good morning and Merry Christmas to all, to a member and guest and visitor alike. It's a pleasure to have everyone here. I, I know this year, uh, you know, Sunday, you know, Christmas is on a Sunday, and the media just had something to write about finally. Uh, do Christians go to church on Sunday? <laughs> Uh, so, and uh, do Christians go to church on Christmas? And uh, it, it was an amazing thing. And But I guess because of a leap year, our normal time to have this happen again gets extended in a little bit further. So I don't think we have to worry about this again until the, the 30s or something. <laughs> um, but I hope everyone has a wonderful Merry Christmas and a wonderful week. Remember, uh, in the church, the 12 days of Christmas start today. And then they go to the 5th. And then the Epiphany, the Day of the Wise Men, is on, on January 6th. Um, but I uh, also want to just highlight on next Sunday, January 1st, uh, uh, we have a little bit of extra fun planned afterwards, a uh, white elephant gift exchange and, and some goodies and, and uh, things like that. So take, take a look at that announcement. Take a look at all the annou other announcements. I won't highlight them now. Um, uh, I hope everyone has just a, an excellent and wonderful Christmas. Charlie's walking down the aisle here. So, as every Christmas, we try to give you a little token of our appreciation from a congregation. So, this year, we've done the same, no difference. So, thank you, Pastor, thank you for everything much. you do for us during the year. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Thank you very much. Thank you. This is the best church in the Missouri Senate. <laughs> I want you to know that. Uh, I might have a couple guys here uh, who are who might disagree with me, uh, but uh, this is the best church in the Missouri Senate. You guys need to know that. Merry Christmas, everyone. <laughs> Thank you.